Welcome to You in HD, your identity in higher definition with Pastor Eric Miller. Join us in our journey of faith in God by taking an in-depth look into the Bible's authority and sufficiency to guide us in our Christian walk. Discover your identity in Jesus Christ today. What's it like being a Christian man? Is it fair? Is it um, just? Do we get? Does everything work the way the Bible says? And will people treat us in a way that's you know respectable? And does forgiveness really heal? You know, these are the questions that I am sure many of y'all have asked my brothers and sisters who are listening. Is it fair when people do not? act out what is clearly in the Bible. Is it fair? No, it's not fair. Not even... No, it's not fair. It's not It's not right either. But you also have to realize that sinners make decisions. And those decisions are as unhealthy as they are. Or you may be the one that has to bear the brunt of saying, look, Lord, forgive them for they know not what they do. It is... It's, that's not easy. Okay? It's not easy. Because you have to dig deep into yourself and reach the part that Jesus Christ saved. And you have to reach in there to for your peace. You have to reach in there for your resolve. You have to reach in there for your endurance. You have to just reach into the very peace that God has given us. And that is to the Holy Spirit, the comforter, the counselor. I think that we really underestimate exactly what the Holy Spirit's job is and what he does for us on a daily basis that same comforting voice that led Jesus out of the wilderness so in, and, and, and the angels ministering to him that same voice that, that, that flew down as a dove upon his head as he was being baptized that same voice that comforts us is the same voice that built the entire universe the very will of God and that will of God lives in us there's no power in the flesh, brothers and sisters. There's no power in the flesh. You can't make something happen that God has not willed. We don't have that kind of power or capacity. Matter of fact, you can't even touch the new nature. You have to literally lean into it through Bible scripture, through obedience, through love, through forgiveness, you know, those fruits of the spirit that are taught to us in Galatians. It doesn't do us any good if we are not acting in that power capacity it just doesn't and that's where we get into oh that's not fair and that's not okay and how come they forgive one guy don't forget look let me tell you i've answered i've i've asked all those questions all of them i have wrestled with it for many 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 months about oh years now like why is it this happened this way and why is it that person gets away with this and it doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't go. I apologize for the wind. I'm outside walking because it's a beautiful night. And even in the midst of my own trouble, I, I get encouraged by y'all. You who are listening, my brothers and sisters, you guys keep me going on some days where I don't want to go no more. But I know that what I go through, you go through. We share this together. And that's important Christian life is not this fictitious thing that, oh, well, the Bible says it, but I just want to do this my way. Don't they, they have to grow, brothers and sisters. Them people got to grow. They they don't know. First of all, it's not something that's natural to most people. Sure, you can follow rules, but obedience, especially to God, costs. It costs a lot. Let's face it, please, please price. The price is not high, but it's high enough to where they don't want to do it. So here we are. We are being the ones that have to give grace and give mercy. And God teaches us that. In these times of feeling alone and feeling like this is just not right. And man, I get it. But Christians, we're not victims of circumstance. 
We are not. We are children of the Most High. And we that means we can take it. Okay? That means we can handle what comes through us or comes to us as long as we get our strength from God. As long as we get our strength from God, we can manage this pain. The loneliness, the the, the feeling that it's not fair. You know, why does why, why does one 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 person seem more forgiving to one situation? Yet, you know what? You can you can bounce that around a thousand. And trust me, I did. I trounced it around a thousand and one times. Being a man that failed in my marriage, you know, I. I have long hungered for trying to find to be to just to be a better man and then to maybe if I just made better choices and just but you know all the things that I I cannot be mad about any of it because it was all of my doing. I'm bearing my soul. I'm not a brand, I'm a man. And that's something I'm really trying to to, to I get I spent so much time trying to build this ministry into something that you know, reflects God. And the truth is it has to, it has to be powered by God in order for it to work. And that is the, the that revelation that hit me. Guys, not tuning in to listen to me. You're here to tune in and listen to the Lord and what the Lord has to say. And, and I just want to give it to you as real as possible. You know, I, I, I get accused of not saying all the right things and not coming up with all the ballyhooing and, and, you know, Lord wants to have you a prosperous winner and the Lord will see you blessed next year. And I mean, I could tell you all that, but none of it's true. Jesus literally practiced day by day, just taking things in stride one day at a time. You know how hard it is to try to manage. I mean, yeah, you want to set a 10 year goal. That's phenomenal. You may not be here in three years. You want, you know, it's it's interesting. People will plan for their business success, but they won't plan for their eternal life success. That's bothersome. And then when we as Christians come around and go, hey, man, don't uh, don't live this way. Then all of a sudden, you know, that's when the, oh, you think you're better than us or why do you think that? And it's, and it's trust me, you guys have probably all heard this before, but I'm here to tell you. You are going to be the. You are going to be groomed and built to be able to give all of the fruits of the spirit to someone and everyone that you meet. God's growing us, and He's growing them too. They have their own plights that we don't even know about. Let's. Let, let, I'm back in the house now, so let's let me let's read this right here. I think this is very important. You know, when you go through trials and tribulations, the only way I've been able to cope with them is by always defaulting back to the word of the Lord and spending time with God, being in his presence. I cannot tell you the the magnitude or the I cannot express how joyous it is to be able to know that reading this Bible and God has trusted me to to talk to my brothers and sisters who are listening. That right there is such a privilege. You are. It is a privilege to be in your house, in your car, wherever you listen. This is a privilege that I really, really have had to grasp in a way that I like I have to I want to extend out and reach my love to you, let you know I care. You know, we live in a world where it just seems that it's easier just to throw people under the bus, throw people out of your life. Let's just get them out because that's the best thing for them. And God, there's nothing in scripture that God says you throw away people. Matter of fact, it's the opposite. But it goes down to obedience. It's going to go down. Look, many will say, Lord, Lord. I, I don't want to wish this on nobody. But many will say, Lord, Lord. But let's let's read that to go over it. But first, I want to tell you. Well, I guess the Lord wants to talk about that. You know, we always look at the part of Lord, Lord, and we think, oh, those are Pharisees and everything. No, they're not. That's not that's not just who he's talking about. Now, I want you to think about this. Now, listen to this. This is not easy. It's not easy to discuss or deal with because it, it's it's a big deal. 
So when we're thinking about my dog, I think my dog is coughing up something. So let's look at the narrow road. That's uh, Matthew chapter 7. Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is broad that leads to destruction. And there are many who enter through it. Many who enter through it. For the gate is small and the way is narrow that leads to life. And there are few who find it. That, that's a huge understanding right there. You've heard me talk about this thousands of times. But the fact that this, this, how narrow is that gate is times like these where we're feeling alone, we're feeling frustrated, we're, we're, in, our, we're in our distress, we're in our moments of, of highest anxiety. And that trains us how, because that's us striving for that small and the way is narrow that leads to life. That's why the struggle is so real. Because it is, it's narrow and few find it. Brothers and sisters, this isn't, you don't become a Christian by somebody dousing some water on you or get dunked in the water. That's an expensive bath. That obedience to, 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 to repent and turn from your sins and the Holy Spirit enters into, into you and preserves you and the power of God sustains you through this. You know, there is a level of I can, I can finally comply to the commandments on some portion. Now, you're not weighed against the, the, in a sense of guilt and condemnation that you'll go to hell for, but you are weighed because you still must follow them. And the Holy Spirit guides us day after day. But listen to this in verse 21, in chapter 7, this is Jesus, verse 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my father who is in heaven will enter. Obedience. When you're having these nights like I'm having where everything seems to just not work out. It is working out. You, we just have to change our mindset to understand God is using these, th this pain. There's a culling process that's happening. Therefore, brethren, I, so therefore I urge you, Romans chapter 12, we heard this many times. Brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. Once again, obedience. Are you going to get it right every day? No. Are you going to fall back into some sins? Yes. But ultimately, you're still being changed. There are other aspects of you that are changed. They, yeah, here's the thing. It's the small things that God affects first. You may think it's always the big, explosive, massive. It's not. It's that sometimes seems like in that 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 inconsequential. That one thing that makes no sense. That you're like, Lord, why'd you fix that? But those are the things that prevent obedience. The one thing that God has been stressing day in and day out from reading this Bible, from, from being in prayer, is your attitude toward each other. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by, by the renewing of your mind. So that you may prove what the will of God is, which is good and acceptable and perfect. Listen to that. That should give us a responsibility. Obedience. I know a lot of men that's suffering right now. A lot. They, they, they're much like me. You know, you messed up in marriage and now you're just you're alone and God's handling you and you just you're feeling detached or you just feel like nothing's working out for you always remember something is worth something is happening in these moments and nights like these is where you cling hard and tight to that cross because not all that cry lord lord will make it to heaven
Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Didn't we preach? Didn't we tell people about you, Father? Yeah, this is serious business, brothers and sisters. There will be there will be Christians that will go to hell because they believe they're saved. But guess what? Did they do the will of the Father? Did they forgive? Did they seek out to heal? Did they do the very things that they vowed to do? And this has to do with everything. That is the key. If you're willing to do it and they're not willing to do it, the best thing for you is to understand it has nothing to do with how you failed, but it has everything to do with how you respond. He's teaching us grace, mercy, and humility. And we give it out freely. We don't give it out because we have to. It's, it's deserving so. You know, people will tell you, I deserve this and I deserve... No, you don't. Not as a Christian. No. You know what you deserve? You deserved hell and God freed you from it. And you received a gift far greater than you can ever imagine. Now the only problem is that people want to hide that light and they want to pick and choose when the light gets shown. Well, let me tell you something. The great electrician in heaven doesn't work that way. And you will either give it or show your true colors. Now, you cannot make people do anything, brothers and sisters, but you can look at yourself and say, Lord, be merciful to me, for I'm a sinner, just like the parable. Be merciful to me. And in times like these where things are rough and tough and hitting the fan and you just feel alone, I want y'all to listen to this. Just listen. This is this is in Galatians chapter 5. This is what's growing in you, okay? Growing in you right now. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. If we go back to Matthew, we see a problem, don't we? You see it and I see it. Don't we both see the issue? Not all to say, Lord, Lord, what? Because they didn't keep the word of the Lord. Keep my commandments. Love each other. Do the right thing with each other. People will know us by how they how we love one another. These things are not just things we read in, a, in the Bible and say, oh, that's nice. But, you know, Lord, when in the real world, things are really bad. You, that's just nonsense. It's nonsense. This doesn't make any sense. Look at John chapter 15, verse 10. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as he, I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be made full. Do you see what he's saying? Though we're hurting, he's growing those spirits so how we can respond to those that we may have hurt, and we're giving out that free grace, mercy, gentleness, and love because that what needs to grow because that is what's constantly under attack. We all feel, oh man, Lord, woe is me. No, you got to give that out. You have to. Or it doesn't work. And nights like these, days like these, when it's just you and God, you have to reflect and write down, get some pieces, get some paper, get a pen, write down your thoughts, your frustrations. And, all, and you take those to the Bible. You take them into Galatians chapter five and you weigh them. And then you see, you see it for yourself, what God has conquered in your life and what God is still working on. Brothers and sisters, this can work. This is a workshop for you. This is a daily struggle that we go through. You too can be victorious and achieve victory over the frustration and distress of your life by giving back to someone else, especially those who you love that you may have spurned, but give back that love and that peace that Jesus Christ promises will be yours. It's that simple. Now, it's not that simple. It's kind of complicated, but you got to, we have to learn those fruits of the spirit because without them, we ain't nothing but spirits of flesh. And you already heard what the Lord said. Did I not prophesy in your name, Father Lord? Yes, you did. But you get away from me. You what? Lawbreakers. 
See, they don't talk about that that much, do they? They don't like talking about the Ten Commandments. They like to try to run away from that. Think, oh, well, Jesus got rid of it. He ain't got rid of nothing. He fulfilled them. Them laws ain't going nowhere. When this whole world blows up, the laws will still be in place. When God says something to be, it bees, and that is just the way it's going to go down. There's nothing you can do to change it. There's nothing I can do to change it. And I don't want to change it. I want Lord to break and mold me. I remember asking the Lord that, begging him, break me, Father, because the things I'm doing is killing me. And he did. And I am still, I fell right on that stone, but I didn't break in half. But the old man got broken, exposed some things in me that definitely needs to be checked. And they will be. I love you guys. And I just wanted to give you all some, just want to talk to you a little bit and just give you some personal, you know, how I feel and how I study and things of that nature. And just what I'm struggling with that I'm sure I want you to find someone you can talk to that you're struggling with, whether that's me or a friend or family. There's, there's a Christian around you can talk to. Don't suffer by yourself. It's not worth it. Get in prayer. Get get in that Bible. It is always there for you. It is such a treat. If you ever want to, you get into a time machine and just be be just blown away by the amazing history of the Bible and an amazing unraveling that that keeps teaching day after day. I, I preach it. Get in your Bible because it is your safety. I was once told you use the Bible as a crutch. I can't stand without it. Glory to God, it is a crutch because I have no strength of my own to stand outside of God. I don't. Matter of fact, that goes back to the closing verse. <clears throat> First Peter 4, 7 through 11. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be alert and sober minded for prayer. See, look at it. Always the same prayer. Verse eight, above all, maintain constant Love for one another, since love covers a multitude of sins. Father, I just don't want to call that person because they made me. It doesn't matter. If you love them, sh above all, maintain constant love for one another, since love covers a multitude of sins. F this is what the Father is trying to hammer home. We are a family. We don't act like People that are not saved. Call the person that you love. Tell them that you love them. I don't care how painful it was. I don't care if they hurt you. Forgive them. Move on. And when I say move on, I don't mean say oh well to them. No, move on from that pain and bitterness and just give them mercy and grace and love. That We didn't do it when it was happening with them. We Maybe that it was happening to us, but to give us, give them back the very mercy and grace that God has given us is a gift. Keep my commandments love one another. Here's Peter, verse 8, 1 Peter, chapter 4, above all means everything you can think of. This is of all the teachings you've heard so far. Maintain constant love to one another. Be hospitable, verse 9, to one another without complaining. Just as each has received a gift, use it to serve others as good stewards of very grace of God. Anyone speaks, let it be as one who speaks God's words. If anyone serves, let it be from the strength that God provides so that God may be glorified through Jesus Christ in everything. To him be the glory, the power forever and ever. Let us pray. Dear Father, thank you for giving me this message to give to my brothers and sisters and let them know that you are fully aware of the circumstances. You are fully aware of their pain and you have not forgotten them, Father. And you, this is how you grow us. You grow us in the furnace and fire of our own decisions and choices and decisions and choices made against us from others. And you teach us how to love and to and be more forgiving and be more merciful, which is the lesson that you been trying to teach all along. First Philippians chapter two, have this mind like Christ. And we don't have that mind like Christ father, but break us as I ask you to tell my, 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 my siblings, my brothers and sisters listening, 
Brothers and sisters, if you're listening, ask the Lord to break you so you can you can get down to that flesh heart, that spiritual heart that has been healed and let God be the strength that pushes you forward through love to heal and to honor someone else. You read it and we read it in your word, Father. We trust what your word is saying. Get after us when we're not being obedient by showing constant love to one another. I ask all these things, Lord, be merciful to us as you are continually. Please, Father, I ask you to watch over our thoughts and minds and chasten us in ways that can improve us to be a better servant and steward of your grace and mercy. Father, I just thank you for the time and the time you spend with your loved ones and your, your my brothers and sisters. Father, you are everywhere at once. You're giving everyone equal measure of your love, and it is far greater than we can imagine. Father, we, we only look to our own problems and our own sorrows, but you have made a good, strong, and positive effort to show just what it means to serve someone else that gives us the joy in return. Father, teach us how service will help us maintain constant love for one another. Let the world see the true Christian people rather than just the scams and frauds. Let them see that we really love each other. We may fight like cats and dogs. But we're licking, but we, we're helping each other by licking each other's wounds and trying to heal each other for the pain that we've caused. Father, forgive those that are disobedient to you. Forgive those who don't forgive and are bitter and things of that nature, Lord. Help us stay out of our own mindset of just woe is me and just what can I do for someone else at this time? As bad as I know my situation is and I know I can't fix it, Father, help us show who else, what else can we do? Who else can fix it? Father, I ask all these things in your, in your precious son's name, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, Jesus himself. Amen. You have just listened to You in HD, your identity in Jesus Christ with Pastor Eric Miller. This ministry is made possible by your thoughtful prayers and donations. Join us each week as we continue to explore our Christian identity in Jesus Christ. May God richly bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.